So this video is going to uh, unpick uh, one of the most commonly found uh, types of protein that we find in signaling pro cascades, which are the G proteins. Uh, so we find G proteins in lots and lots of different pathways, uh, but they can be a little bit difficult to get your head around. So I want to just uh, think about G proteins uh, to start with, and then we'll look at a couple of examples of where they're found in signaling pathways. Okay, So G proteins um, are named because uh, they're proteins that interact with GTP. Okay, so that's that's the nucleoside guanine, and so that's the G from ACCs and Gs in the DNA. And it's all about um, the uh, whether the protein is bound to GTP or GDP. So let's have a look at this just as the theory to start with, and then we'll look at a couple of biologic examples. So. We can imagine our protein has two states. Um, we've got an active state, and let's just have a different shape there. We've got an inactive state. Okay, so our G protein can be in one of two states. And which state it's in uh, depends on whether it's bound to GTP or GDP. So GTP is the active state. GDP is the inactive state. Okay, so this is the active protein. So the active version is GTP bound. Okay, so the question is then, well, how do we switch between the active and the inactive form? Okay, so to switch the protein off, so to go in this direction, um, what we need there is a process just of hydrolysis. Okay, so what the protein is able to do, um, it is a GTPase. Um, so what that means is it is able to hydrolyze the GTP, um, so it releases a phosphate group, and then GDP is remaining. Okay, so going in that direction is a process uh, just of hydrolysis. So we uh, cut the last phosphate off. Uh, remember, GTP is triphosphate. Um, uh, let's just put that there. So that's triphosphate. So there are three phosphate groups attached to GTP. Um, and to GDP, that is the diphosphate, which is two phosphate groups. So in exactly the same way as we thought about ATP and ADP, it's exactly the same, but this time it's GTP and GDP. Okay? So we have hydrolysis in one direction, so we just cut off the last phosphate. To go in the other direction, to go back, we need uh, a process uh, of nucleotide exchange. So we can't just add the phosphate back onto the GDP. What, what the protein actually does um, is to chuck off the old GDP, so we get rid of the old uh, GTP, uh, sorry, GDP, and then we add a new molecule of GTP. So we exchange that with what's just in the cytosol. We chuck off the old GDP, we get rid of that entirely, and then we add a new fresh GTP onto the molecule. Okay, so those are our two switching mechanisms. And there are two types of regulatory protein that help uh, this process. Okay, so to do the hydrolysis, uh, we have what are called gap proteins. Okay, so they stand for GTPase activating proteins. Um, so they will encourage that hydrolysis. So in encouraging this hydrolysis, what they do is to switch the system off. Okay, so the GAP protein encourages the G protein um, to uh, hydrolyze the GTP. Um, so we go to the GDP form, so we've inactivated. So GAP protein switch the system off. 
The opposite of a GAP protein would, we, would be what we call a GEF, which is a guanine nucleotide exchange factor. So GEF is guanine nucleotide exchange factor, um, and they will switch on the system because they get rid of the old, they encourage the G protein to get rid of the old GT, GDP and add the new GTP. Okay, so GAFs, uh, sorry, GAPs switch the system off, GEFs switch the system on. Okay, so that's the principle of how they work. So let's now think of a couple of biological examples. And there are two different types of G proteins uh, that we find in cellular signaling cascades. So one would be a monomeric G protein. Um, so monomeric means single subunit. OK, so we've just got an isolated protein doing its thing. So we've got a monomeric protein, and our classic example for that is RAS, which is part of the EGFR cascade. Um, so there's a whole other video about growth factor signalling, and RAS will crop up in there. Um, but So I'm not going to go through the whole signalling pathway, I'm just going to zoom in on the G protein. OK, so the way uh, that this um, signalling pathway works uh, so we're at the plasma membrane and uh, we have uh, a pair of receptors uh, which are the growth factor receptors and as I say there's a whole other video that you can look at um, to see how this pathway works in more detail but what happens as a result of uh, binding is that we have phosphorylated receptors so uh, this is the uh, epidermal growth factor receptor, uh, that will be epidermal growth factor itself, and when we've got the, um, the ligand binding, we have this uh, transphosphorylation, so we have a phosphate group stuck on there. And in the other video, I tell you that the next protein to come in and bind is a protein called SOS, um, and then I just told you that SOS activated a protein called RAS. OK, which is true, but we're going to just think about that in a little bit more detail. So the next protein in the cascade is a protein called RAS. And it is a G, uh, it's a G protein. OK, so in the inactive state, RAS, of course, will be bound to GDP. But when SOS is in the system, SOS is able to activate RAS. So RAS um, will get activated because SOS is a GEF. It is a, nucleotide, a guanine nucleotide exchange factor. So SOS is going to activate RAS by getting RAS to get rid of that old GDP and to bind with a new molecule of GTP. Okay, so we're now, we've taken a new molecule of GTP from the cytosol, so RAS is now active because it was activated by SOS, which was a GEF. Okay, so RAS is now active and that can go and activate other proteins. Um, and if you watch the rest of the video, it activates um, something called the MAP kinase cascade. Uh, which is a really important series of events in that signaling pathway. Okay, so RAS, it's a single protein, um, so uh, it's in the GDP bound form to start with, so it's inactive. When SOS is correctly positioned on the receptor, SOS acts as a GEF, so it acts as an exchange factor. So RAS, if it binds to SOS, gets rid of its old GTP, uh, sorry, GDP, activates a new GTP, so it becomes active, and therefore can stimulate other processes. Okay, so RAS, classic example of a monomeric GT, uh, G protein. But there are also other types of uh, G proteins which are known as hetero, uh, 
trimeric G proteins. So heterotrimer means three different subunits. So the trimer, trimer is three, hetero is different. Okay, so RAS just functioned by itself, but heterotrimeric G proteins are a little bit more complicated because we've actually got a complex of three proteins. So let's have a think about how these work. So again, we're at the plasma membrane. Um, so let's have our look at our complex. We've got a complex of three different proteins, which we call alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay, so that is our heterotrimer. We've got three subunits. Um, we're not going to worry too much about beta and gamma. They do do interesting things. But the most important protein for us is the alpha protein because it's the alpha protein is the GTPase. Okay, so the alpha is kind of the equivalent to the monomeric protein. Yeah, the, the gamma and the beta don't interact with GTP. So, um, so at the moment, our protein, uh, is, let's say it's got GDP on it. Okay, so GDP bound equals inactive and they're found as a complex okay so the three proteins are hanging around together in the gdp bound phase okay so obviously we're going to need to uh, activate uh, this complex and switch gdp for gtp so this happens um, at a receptor Um, so the type of receptor is what we call a GPCR, which is a G protein coupled receptor. And loads and loads and loads of animal signaling processes use these coupled receptors. Uh, so they're found in the olfactory system, they're found in the adrenaline system, and there's another video about adrenaline signaling for you that you'll meet these things. Um, they're in uh, neurotransmitters, all sorts of things uh, interact via these G-protein coupled receptors, which have a very characteristic structure um, of seven transmembrane Domain. So there are seven alpha helices that sort of poke in and out of the membrane. So GPCRs always have this seven transmembrane domain structure. So that makes it quite different to a receptor like over here that's just got a single transmembrane domain. Okay. So here's my G protein coupled receptor and it's bound to some sort of signal. So it might be serotonin, it might be a scent molecule, it might be adrenaline, doesn't really matter for this. Okay. So when the receptor is um, bound to its ligand, it becomes a GEF. Okay, so if the receptor is activated, it effectively becomes a GEF. So what happens there? So that means that our alpha subunit is going to get rid of its old GDP. It's going to add a new molecule of GTP. So it's had nuclear nucleotide exchange. Okay, so we've got alpha is now bound to GTP. So alpha is active. And when alpha is active and uh, bound to GDP, it dissociates, it separates from beta and gamma. Okay, so uh, in the GTB, GTB bound state, it's active. Um, and it dissociates. So in the active state, we've just got alpha. The betas and the gammas kind of disappear. So alpha is now active. So alpha uh, can travel uh, through the membrane. Notice that they have got lipid tails. So they are bound to the membrane. So there'll be another protein sitting in the membrane. So uh, alpha... Remember, this is a two-dimensional thing, so alpha can just move around. Uh, so it can then associate with another protein. So there's alpha with its GTP. And it's able 
to activate the next protein. Okay? And in doing so, we'll then hydrolyze the GTP to go back to the resting state. Okay, so in our monomeric system, uh, it's a bit easier. We've just got a single protein. So we've got GDP, we're inactive. We interact with a GEF, in this case SOS. We exchange the nucleotides, we become active, and we activate down things downstream. Okay, the heterotrimeric system, alpha is basically doing the same job. So the alpha is the GTPase. But we've got this added complication of the complexes. So in the inactive state, it's a heterotrimer. It's alpha is bound to GDP, and all three subunits are sitting there together in the membrane. When um, we uh, activate the complex, so at the G protein coupled receptor, the receptor acts as a GEF, so we have nucleotide exchange. So now alpha is bound to GTP, and it's active in that form. Uh, it dissociates it from beta and gamma, it leaves them behind, and then alpha can travel in the membrane um, and go and activate other proteins. Um, so that might be proteins, uh, if you watch the adrenaline video, uh, that might be proteins like phospholipase C, for example, uh, which initiates a further cascade. So, G proteins, are we bound to GTP or GDP? We have hydrolysis to switch it off and nucleotide to switch it on. Uh, sorry, nucleotide exchange to switch it on, catalyzed by a GEF. Monomerics, uh, so we've got an example of SOS is a GEF, uh, so that activates the monomeric protein RAS. Heterotrimerics, the receptor itself, the G protein coupled receptor, acts as a GEF. Um, and we've got this additional complication of we start off with three subunits together. When we have uh, binding with the receptor and we have that GEF activity, the complex dissociates, and it's alpha that then goes and activates downstream proteins. So we see G proteins in all sorts of different cascades. Uh, as I say, they can be just a little bit tricky to get your head around, but the most important thing, if it's bound to GTP, it's active, bound to GDP, it's inactive.